Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Our Journal Prompts and More. It's September week one and so time for another mood board. Now for some of the new members in the group that joined us through the watercolour challenge that we did not, um, last month, let me just explain how this works. At the beginning of each month during week one um, we have a mood board and we create a project based on um, the images that we see here. So you just take inspiration from the images and produce a project. It can be absolutely anything. It could be um, another watercolour project, for instance, um, inspired by the flowers. Um, it could be um, an altered book cover. Um, it could be something using the denim. Entirely up to you. It could be an art journal page, um, anything you like. So, of course, for this mood board, we've got the flowers that you see here, carnation-type flowers in white, pale pink, and the deeper pink. Then we've got got um, some sewing equipment, we've got um, a denim pocket, um, needle and thread and a thimble. We've got some old vintage book spines here um, and a selection of trims and laces. So um, let me talk through what, um, what I'm going to do um, this week. Now as soon as I saw this mood board I just instantly wanted to do something with vintage um, books. I've got this vintage book cover, um, you can see it's really really tatty, this is just the, the cover, the pages have been um, removed, I think it was an old music um, book so I want to do something with this. Um, I'm also taking inspiration from the flowers as well, let me just pop this to one side um, because this time last year, in fact it was slightly later last year, I went absolutely mad um, on eco dyeing and um, you know these are some of the pieces I've just got a whole box of the pieces that I eco dyed um, and I'll leave the link um, to the video where I showed you how I did this in the description box below um, but basically I boiled um, leaves and flowers to create um, all these wonderful pages um, here um, and a lot of you at the time said well what are you going to do with them and I did promise that as soon as I decided what I was going to do that I would would share it with you. So because of all the watercolouring that we've been doing I want to make a journal um, that includes some of these eco dyed pages but also watercolour paper as well that I can practice um, my watercolour paintings um, and make it into a nature journal. So you know that is um, the direction that I'm going in. I've never done anything like this before um, so you know let's get started. Now I'm going to see if I can tidy the spine of my book up. It's got all these pieces of um, book attached um, to it, glued on with really strong book glue. Um, if this doesn't work, then I can take it apart and I can um, replace the spine. But I do want to keep its integrity um, if I can. So I'm just going to use my knife carefully um, just to see if I can remove sort of all these um, glued on pieces. Okay, so the glue came up nicely and my book is still intact, but you can see that the spine is really flimsy. So what I am going to do um, is I've got um, a piece of chipboard here. This is just um, a quite a thin piece of picture framing mount board and I'm just going to put that in the center of the spine there just to give it um, a bit more strength and I'm going to stick that down with some Fabri-Tac so let's just put some Fabri-Tac on here in fact I'm going to do this off my book because I want to keep um, the sort of end pages as they are just because I really like that grungy um, vintage look I could of course cover those with some pretty papers but you know I'm going for a real vintage theme here and so I don't want to. So I'm just applying plenty of Fabri-Tac here, make sure that I've got plenty um, on the ends, there we go. And then I'm just going to carefully put this um, in the middle and I've measured this to make sure that it's the, the right length and then I'm just going to carefully just push that um, into place because I've got um, a bit of wiggle room here um, and then I'm just going to, yeah, that's right, just um, wait, wait that down until it's dry and Fabri-Tac uh, Fabri dries really quickly. 
So my spine um, is glued down now and I just want to cover it in some of this um, cloth here. This is Webtex um, military cloth um, and this will just sort of, you know, give added strength to my binding again. I'm not worried about the fact that it's green because I've got lots of greens in my eco dye papers anyway. So actually, um, I think by the time the book is finished, it will match really well. Um, now, I am the type of person that it will bug me if I don't get this completely central. So I've drawn a line in the centre of this um, piece that I added here. Um, and then I know that my cloth measures, let me just make sure that it is, it measures two inches. Um, and so that it is going to be completely central by the time I place it on my spine. So let's just have a go and see if I can do this. So I'm going to do the inside um, first. Let's have a look. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I want to try and get it as near as I possibly, as near as I possibly can. So there we go, that's going to be about right. And then I'm just going to completely smooth this down. This is really, really sticky. So what have I done with my bone folder? So I'm just going to use my bone folder here. Um, I'm going to make sure that I get sort of in the creases here so that my book will fold nicely. Um, then I'm going to trim off the excess and I'm going to do the same on the other side. So that's trimmed um, and what I've done is I've made um, two white marks, top and bottom, um, just so that I can line this up here. Now I want to leave a little bit um, over so that I can um, wrap, it, wrap it around but not, not too much. So I just need to make sure that I line, oop, line this up carefully. There we go. And press it down lightly at first until you know um, that you've got it in the right place. So I'm just going to lift this up and just double check. Yeah, and that's about that's about right. So I'm just going to press this down firmly before before I trim it. Um, I'll allow myself a little bit extra um, at this end to start off with because um, I think I shall trim this down with my Stanley knife perhaps just so that everything is all nice and neat. This stuff is difficult to cut because of course it's really, really sticky. So now that I know that, um, that I've got it even, I'm just going to trim my tape. So I'm just going to put my ruler on here. I'm using my cutting mat and then I've got a really sharp Stanley knife. Um, so I'm just going carefully here because I don't want to pucker it. And I shall do exactly the same thing on the other on the other side. So hopefully that should here we go, pull away nicely. There we go. And then I can just wrap that over like like that. And here we go. I've got a bit of jiggery pokery there to make sure that it's in the right place. Now you can see I've decided to add some washi tape just because these end bits here were really bugging me. So I'm trying to leave a little bit um, of a gap um, for the crease of that um, spine. I'm cutting my washi tape um, to size and then I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac just to glue it down because this washi tape isn't sticky enough to hold by itself so let's have a look that's that's about right so I'm going to peel this off use some um, wax paper and put some Fabri-Tac on the back so let me just show you on this one here I'm just going to peel that up gently put some Fabri-Tac um, all down the end of my my washi tape and of course I need to make sure that I focus on getting um, glue to the edges. So I'm just going to use my finger, you'll see in a second. Am I in frame? This is really, really fiddly, sorry guys. So I'm just going to use my finger like this just to make sure that I spread that fabric tack out um, to the edges. So I might need a little bit more. Um, you could probably use matte medium for this or even um, Mod Podge. But as I say, the um, It, it just won't stick on its own. That should be enough. So let me just make sure I get this the right way up. So 
so I'm just going to line it line it up like like that and take it all the way all the way down and then just make sure that I press that down with my fingers um, and as I've said to you before Fabri-Tac dries really really quickly and I'll do exactly the same thing with the other side so that's my vintage book prepped and you can see that I've just got some um, bulldog clips on the end just making sure that that washi um, is firmly stuck and that it's just not going to lift at the edges. So I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes whilst I pull out some bits and pieces to decorate my cover. Um, so of course this is where the um, fun starts. So let me share with you what I've pulled out. Um, I've got a copy of the Nature Notes of an Edwardian Lady um, and I thought I might be able to use this paper here because I want something fairly plain as my backdrop so that I can layer. I've got one of these butterflies from the Tim Holtz ideology. These are the transparent wings and I thought something like, like that might be quite nice to use. I've got a tea stained doily, a piece of burlap, various um, trims and ribbons as well and then I've got some dried flowers. Let me just grab them. Now when I was eco dyeing uh, my papers I kept all of the leaves and flowers um, and I just press them in this. It's um, something that I picked up from the charity shop Historic Sporting Headlines. Um, some of them are pretty crude, so if I show you something that um, is not particularly appealing, then I apologise. I didn't buy it for that. It was just because the paper um, is just really good for um, pressing pressing flowers, and it's quite a thick book. But just look at some of these. Um, I've got some of the fuchsias as well, um, maple leaves, although some of them are really delicate, so I thought I might be able to use some of these um, and then also look what I found again these are leaves left over from my eco dyeing but look <laughs> I've actually found a carnation so I'm going to try and um, use that somewhere as well now before I do anything I just want to grunge up the edges of my book even more this is really nice and sturdy um, now it's gone a bit misshapen but by the time I've got my signature in it um, it will be fine so I'm just going to use a really tatty old nail file and I'm just going to file around the edges just to grunge it up a little bit more. So I've grunged up the front and I just really like that because it's lightened the area around the edge so that's the back. I'm going to do exactly the same with the back um, and I'm just doing this over my bin just to catch any of the dust. Now would you believe it clumsy old me whilst I was um, reaching for my frayed burlap distress ink the whole drawer tipped upside down and I've got all of this mess all over the page I was going to use. I was planning on trimming it down anyway so I'm going to give it a go and see if I can um, rescue it because I can't find anything else um, that is going to do the job any better. Um, I do want to tear the pages just so that they're grungy. Look at the state of me. This is from the cleanup um, action. <laughs> It's just one of those things, isn't it? Um, now, how am I going to have that fitting on my page? Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to tear that across there, like, like that. And this way, it just looks a bit more, a bit more grungy. Let's have a, a look. And have that about about there yeah and now you can hardly tell that um, that I made a complete mess of it and especially if I sort of you know go around and just try and sort of make it a bit more irregular what I shall do here is tear that um, and fold it over just to hide where I've got that yellow yellow splodge um, and so I'm going to fiddle around with this until I'm happy with it um, and also I shall use if I can find it in fact I'll use a pair of scissors it might be easier just to grunge up the edges even more like this and then I'm just going to go over this with some frayed burlap distress ink so that looks a lot better. Um, I've just, you know, curled it and, um, you know, just pulled in the edges like this just to give it a really grungy look. And now what um, I want to do is use some frayed burlap. I'm going to use my little um, blending brush that you saw me use the other week. Um, and I'm just going to go around the edge here, um, building it up slowly just to um, distress it. 
like this and then I shall go around the edge just on the edge just so that it's darker there like like that and I shall do this all the way um, around I really like the way that looks and then to cover up where I dropped the yellow distress ink pad I think I am going to have that piece of burlap on there like that and then I really like the look of this trim just on the side here like that I just think that looks absolutely beautiful um, and then I have um, just got my little flowers um, there was another piece attached to it I've tried to sort of make it a little bit um, a little bit thinner um, I think I should maybe try and distress that um, a little bit I don't know whether it'll take because this is uh, masking tape but I can try just because it looks a bit shiny and new I've got to be careful with this that you see that looks better um, I do want to age the burlap as well and I think I am going to sew the flower to the burlap just to hold it um, in in place um, of course I pulled out this clear butterfly here and it's too big so I've found another one that's slightly smaller and I just think that I want to leave that really simple something like that so I'm just going to have a play around with my composition um, and then I'll be back so I'm just grunging up this piece of burlap a little bit um, as well just because it just looks too clean in comparison to everything else at the at the moment so let's just try and give this more of a, a grungy look I could have um, made up some tea stain but um, but this is easier because I've got it to, to hand right I'm going to go for it I'm going to start gluing things down so I'm just going to add some Fabri-Tac just around the edge of my paper there we go just like this And I'm going to centralise that like so. So just press that down. There we go. Um, and then let me just put the trim down. Now I've just trimmed this up as well. Which way round does it go? I think it's that way. Um, and of course I need to make sure as well um, that I centralise this so I think what I'm going to do is clip clip my book together just so that I can make sure that I get this even when I glue it down to the spine like that and again I'm going to use some um, Fabri-Tac I'm just going to do it on the edge for the, for the time being let's just move that out of the way I shall put some on this line here as well there we go that will do for the for a minute and I want that to go on there like like that I just need to make sure that I get this in the right right place. Now I've just found my Fabri-Tac that I decanted into one of these fine nozzle bottles and I'm just going to add a little bit just along this edge here as well. Only a bit, not too much. Now Fabri-Tac does have a tendency to show and bleed through fabric so I'm hoping that by doing it on the thicker areas it won't show very much I'm not adding a lot and then I can just glue 
glue that down like like that. I'm going to have to weight that down with a book, I think. That's stuck, so I just want to trim um, the edge here. Just being careful about it. I don't want to cut into my into my book. There we go. I can um, trim that up a little bit better in a in a second. Let's try my smaller scissors. So I'm happy with that. Um, so I just want to attach my flowers like that. And as I've said, I'm going to sew this on. Um, I've threaded a needle and I'm going to try and keep that flat. I want it to fit um, the whole of this piece of hessian and have it hanging off the end so that if this starts to lift for any reason I can cover this with a piece of deli paper just to hold it hold it down you've seen me do that before on paper but I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work um, on fabric so that would be my last resort so I'm just going to stitch this I should do it off camera though because um, you know it's fiddly and I want to concentrate on what I'm doing well, I've changed my mind. I'm coming in through the through the back. Let's see if I can show you how I'm I'm doing this. And this will just become a bit of a feature, I hope, um, of the of the piece. There we go. And I'm just going to keep going down, trying to get it as close to the stem as I can just to hold that um, in place. There we go. Um, and I might end up putting a few stitches um, at the top of these stems up, up here as well. We'll see how it looks once I've done, done this. Right, I've sewn my flower on. I love how that looks. Um, and I think I've come up with an idea as, as well as to how I can protect it. I've got some of these covers here. I've got a whole box of them that I picked up from the scrap store. So I'm just going to slide or try and slide this in really, really carefully. Now this is not quite big enough, but I've got um, an idea. Um, I don't know whether it'll work or not, but um, but let's give it... Let's give it a go. So I'm just going to slide slide that down really, really carefully. Go on, in you go, like this. And then I'm just going to make a slit on the back at the bottom. Uh, where's my stunny knife gone? Let me do this on my cutting mat so that I don't end up going through to my new book. Um, so let's have a look. Let's just try and slide this down a bit more. So I'm just going to make a tiny slit just just there just so that I can slide this down and the tip of my the base of my carnation can stick out through the bottom I'm going to fiddle around with that off camera just so that I don't end up crushing and crumbling my flower now that's actually worked really well um, so what I'm going to do now is I've got it in position I'm going to hold it in place with a bulldog clip and I don't know whether you can see I've used some of my red score tape to put some tape on the inside of the plastic cover um, and that's just so that I can can um, hold it in place to stop it um, shifting and um, coming out. So if I can get the back of the tape, um, I'll glue it down and hopefully that will, here we go, and hopefully that will um, do the trick and just hold it, hold it in place. There we go. And so I know it's um, plastic, but at least it protects the integrity of my flower. Um, so I'm just going to, um, I think, pop that on with a little bit of Fabri-Tac. So here we go, I'll just add a little bit of Fabri-Tac on the um, back. I don't need much. And decide where I want that to go. Let me stand up so that, um, that I can see about there, I think. So again, I'm just going to have to um, weight that down with a, with a book. I'm really happy with that. Sorry about the glare. Um, that's stuck down really well. I've also added some lace to the um, other side as well, just to just because this just looked really boring and plain. I'm happy with that now. And just to finish off the outside cover, I'm going to add my butterfly there. 
Again, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. I know that if I use Fabri-Tac, um, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's why you know I'm using it in, in this case. Um, so I'm just going to pop that, where shall I have it? There, I think. So I'm just going to have to let that sit and dry. I think I'll flatten, flatten that out. There we go, just so that it doesn't uh, dry wonky. So this is what I'm going to do to finish off my cover. I've chosen some of the Tim Holtz um, chipboard words, take the scenic route and collect beautiful moments. Um, I've inked around the edges using frayed burlap because you can see what they look like um, beforehand. It's just too white and it just doesn't go. So again, um, I am just going to use some Fabri-Tac to glue these down. So I'm going to finish off here um, today guys. Um, I just absolutely love how this cover looks. Um, here it is. Um, let me just flip it over so that you can see both sides. One little tip for you. You saw me add the Fabri-Tac and then um, hold it down with a book. And if I hold up close, I don't know whether you can see, you can um, slightly see the Fabri-Tac showing through. Um, I didn't do that on the other side. I applied the Fabri-Tac, then just patted it down gently with my fingers and just left it to dry naturally um, and that's much much better so you know if you're going to use Fabri-Tac I would advise that you do that with with Fabri you just get a much much nicer finish um, but you know at the end of the day it is what it is and I can't um, do anything about it um, I just think that's absolutely beautiful um, I've applied a small pearl to the center of the butterfly the butterfly just goes absolutely beautifully with the burgundy background. If I hold it this way around, you can see the whole thing. Um, and I just absolutely love as well how the Tim Holtz um, chipboard chit chat words go with the butterfly um, tape on the other side as well. This is not Tim Holtz, I don't think. I think this is either the works or um, Poundland, um, but nevertheless, it just works really nicely together. Um, I'm not going to cover up um, the insides. I just really really like the vintage um, look. I like seeing the text here. It says um, Stephen and Chloe, um, Monday, November the 5th, 1915. Um, what, what else does it say? Um, rehearsal Friday 1.30, November the 19th onwards. Um, so I'm just going to leave that there because I just think that's a really nice reminder of just what was here um, from the previous owners before. I think that's lovely. Um, I like all the mould and mildew as well. This smells really vintagey, which I personally um, happen to, to like. Um, and I will do the signature with you at um, another stage as well. I'm not going to do it today because I've run out of time. Um, this is a half an hour video but this has taken me considerably longer to finish this up than the half an hour that you are seeing here. It's taken quite a few hours today um, and I don't want to rush the signature inside. I want to um, take my time putting the pages together and really having a think about how I want to use it. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video today. Um, I think I've used most of the elements in the mood board with the exception of the denim um, certainly use the um the laces that, that were shown. I've got the vintage feel going on. I've used the books. Um, certainly the flowers and even um, flukily managed to um, incorporate um, the carnations as well. Um, so that's that for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below um, and I'll be back um, with part two um, very very soon hopefully um, sometime next week. So take care, everyone. Um, don't forget that, um, you know, you do not have to do the same kind of thing as me. You don't have to um, make a journal like I'm, I'm doing here. If you don't want to, you could do um, perhaps an altered um, book page, for, for instance, or a tag or an art journal page. Entirely up to you. So I really do look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret the mood board this week. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.